is Scott McLeod. I'm here with Andrea Whitmarsh, superintendent of the Greene County Schools in Virginia. Uh, one of my favorite superintendents in the entire country. We are talking about the coronavirus. Uh, Andrea, tell us a little bit about what the school district's response has been uh, so far. So um, yesterday, or last Friday afternoon at about two o'clock, um, we got notice that all of our schools were closing um, for a minimum of two weeks. We had no notice. Um, about that, although we were making plans, we thought we would have some time before we could actually, before we actually had to close. Um, so at that point, everything went into overdrive and um, we started first to, to talk about what the, uh, the basic needs that we could provide as a school division. For example, meals um, for our students who, who might go without or who's, would, whose families might struggle to provide during this time. Um, so we started a meal, um, meal delivery, not delivery, where they can pick up at schools right now and we're moving into the delivery phase um, after the first week. Um, we also then started gathering activities that we could provide to our students and we pushed those out. Um, you know, there's been a lot of questions regarding providing um, continuity of education. We're in a rural county, we're a small rural county, we have about 3,000 students. Broadband is not widely accessible in our community. Most of our students do not have internet at home. And whereas we are one-to-one -one in almost all of our grade levels, at home, those, those Chromebooks aren't working. Right. Um, so we, we brought together lots of activities um, to send home to students. Okay. Andrea, what, uh, what is food delivery gonna look like there? So, that is a really good question. So we've got all kinds of ideas. One of the best things that, that has come out of this is the creativity of our staff and educators. You know, the schools are the heart of the community and, and when things get tough, the schools, the schools will help um, and people look to the schools for support. So um, we're looking at first going to certain stops in our community um, where they, they can, families can get there a little easier. And then we're taking, um, we're asking for families to contact us if they need meal delivery, if they don't have transportation. And we have so many volunteers who are, who are willing to help with that. That's awesome, cool. So what seems to be working here in these early days? What is working? I would say a community support, um, volunteers, our educators, um, our educators have so many creative ideas on how to reach their students, um, whether it's helping from a division level, putting together activities, or whether it's yesterday at our meal pickup, we had um, our librarians, two librarians who had pulled a bunch of books out of their libraries that students could check out on the curb. Um, you know, so I would say the creativity is just, just fantastic. We're gonna do a community scavenger hunt, um, you know, they've got lots of, lots of things planned so that families can do so, they can get out of the house, not come in contact with anybody else, oh, right. um, but, but can, uh, can get out and explore and it gives, kind of gives a purpose and things to do. That's fantastic. I can't remember what you call them, but you have this group of like lead innovation teachers, right? Yes, we have lead innovators. Yeah, okay, cool. And mm -hmm. what have you got them up to right now? So um, they are among the most creative. Um, we, we had a group that created a TikTok to tell students how much they missed them this week. Um, we have, uh, they're coming up with a lot of the ideas and um, you know, I'll tell you a lot of things we don't even know about because teachers are just naturally connecting with their students um, while they're not here. Uh, so that's, that's pretty fantastic. Gotcha. So challenges right now or challenges that lie ahead, you think? <laughs> uh, yes, challenges, um, the unknown. Um, I think that is, that's, that's a little scary in terms of, um, you know, what's coming, how long will we be closed? Will we reopen for the rest of the year? You know, that's certainly a question out there. Um, we, I feel like we're in a holding pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could, um, if we knew which way we were headed, we could move forward or, you know, move in one direction, whether we knew we were coming back to school on the 30th, as is currently planned, or whether we were going to be closed indefinitely and we could move to something 
um, you know, online access or providing um, activities and in, or instruction in a different way. That that is certainly a challenge. We're very worried about um, students being isolated um, or sitting in front of a sitting in front of a screen or in front of a television and not having um, the adult interaction that they they might need, whether their parent has to still work sure. or or what have you. Um, so we starting next week, we're initiating student contact. So every student will get a phone call from a, an educator at least once a week just to check on them, make sure they're doing OK. Um, those kinds of things. Fantastic. Um, so I know that Internet access is spotty. So I've started doing some uh, online readiness, online learning readiness check ins with my own students. Um, I know that a number of districts are kind of doing that with their families as well, trying to see what the capacity is out there. I don't know, have you all done anything like that? So, so we have not, well, not formally. Mm -hmm. um, we have done some of that and we're doing some of that prior to any of this happening. You know, we have the issue of you know, just the, as I said earlier, equity of access and, and, and that is, not only broadband, but how do we address the needs of our special education students when they're not here? How do we provide those accommodations that are necessary? And that's one of the that is one of the the challenges certainly when it comes to are we going to provide online online learning? And and the thing I would say one of the things I really worry about is is as a school division we've done so many things to be innovative and different and um, and have our students truly engaged in their learning I want to make sure that doesn't stop you know so so we're putting together um, activities in each of our uh, pillars of innovation mm -hmm. um, so that students you know I don't want to revert when the going gets tough I don't want to revert to traditional packets right you know I, th I think we need to show that learning should still be relevant real life engaging Absolutely. you know all of those things Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, we're all starting to realize that the arc of this is going to be months, not weeks. Um, and so, and I think, you know, I was talking with somebody yesterday is the challenge is how do you do that deeper, more authentic, you know, um, engaging learning when you might be, still be stuck at home. You can't like go out and venture too far, right? So some of those place-based or service-based or community-based options aren't there for us in the same way. Agreed. And when you don't know what kind of resources might be available in that home, um, you know, that, 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 you know, that is a challenge too. And how, and, you know, I do think if schools were to close for a longer period of time, our educators are ready to respond, you know, so, and we're ready to, to step up, um, not necessarily formally or, um, you know, all in the same way, but that's the beauty of it, right? You know, the way our teachers made those connections in person with our kids, I think it'll just, you know, require them to come to a different level to make different kinds of connections as they help facilitate the deeper learning. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you want to share? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. We are, you know, Every day, the situation is changing, and we're doing the best that we can to rise to that challenge and make sure that our kids are taken care of. Um, I think, you know, again, in these in these challenges, these um, in times of adversity, our communities really reach out, and and we really see the importance of school schools in the lives of our kids. Awesome. They're lucky to have you there. They're lucky to have your teachers and leadership team. I know your families are appreciative. Yeah. And uh, hey, let's support each other, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>